Isaiah 49 verse 9. I'm going to read it in the NLT version. And it says, I will say to the prisoners, come out in freedom. And to those in darkness, come into the light. They will be my sheep grazing in green pastures and on hills that were previously bare. That's what God wants to do today. Moving us from darkness into light. And where there is light, there is growth, there is freedom, there is liberty, there is speed, and there is ease. Let's say a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you, Daddy. We exalt you and we give you the praise. Father, we thank you for making this day possible. The first Christian meditation in Edmonton. Father, we are so, so thankful. This is making history. Father, we are so, so grateful. Daddy, we commit this conference even unto your hands. The Lord, you will take absolute control of it in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, you will translate us from darkness or any iota of darkness in our lives into light. Let your light break forth in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be liberty. Let there be freedom. Let there be ease. Let there be growth. Let there be life in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of it all, let your name alone be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome, welcome home. I am so glad to welcome you to our first ever Hour of Meditation Conference. Myself and the rest of the team are very excited to, um, to usher you <laughs> into the profound benefits of guided Christian meditation. So my name is Christine, and I will be your host this morning. I will go through some housekeeping, and I will read some of the powerful testimonies that we have already received on how this powerful movement has touched so many hearts, reached so many lives, and transformed them. So everybody say with me, Jesus is on the move. Jesus is on the move. Amen. Indeed, Jesus is on the move and he's moving all across the globe and he is doing wonderful things in people's lives. So I will read a few testimonies from um, a few people who have shared their experience with home. So our first testimony comes from Rachel. Rachel says, home has blessed me tremendously and abundantly. My channel of grace is meditation, but I was one of those people who were afraid to meditate. I liked the wisdom of meditation, and not only was I afraid of confronting and seeing myself, but I did not know the face that I was going to see on the other side. During the first hour of meditation, um, she says she was excited, but also extremely scared. She didn't know what to expect, but she says, I knew that I needed to be part of this great movement. She needed an intimate space with God that she could only get through meditation. Just the first hour of meditation um, was a breakthrough of healing for her. She says, I am able to gain wisdom on meditation and confront the dark side that I have always been afraid of. I was able to forgive myself and many others by going back and changing my story. I was able to create a safe, peaceful, full of light and intimate space for God and I to dwell in. I was able to receive visions upon visions and revelations that just flowed with ease. And also she received abundance of strength and mental healing. God knows the cries of his children and God calling home has transformed the cries into beauty and glory through meditation. God is truly intentional, intentional in everything that he does. And I thank Apostle Emmanuel for answering the calling of home. I am indeed dwelling in the home of my father. Praise Jesus. Thank you so much, Rachel, for sending in this testimony. Um, the second testimony I will read comes from Shasley. She says, I want to thank Jesus for the, empowerment, for the empowering session of home that I attended on Saturday, January 20, 2024. This was her first time coming to home, and she says she experienced immense mental peace by spending time in her Heavenly Father's home. 
She says, I arrived with the expectation that whatever it was that the Lord wanted to reveal to me today would be received through the hour of meditation. I do not remember the last time I have intentionally taken that amount of time to silence my entire life and be that still. At the start of the session, as I sat in complete stillness, my vision became laser focused on Apostle and some of the stage lights within the sanctuary. The positioning of one of the lights appeared as a cross and my peripheral vision was completely blurred. I was fully of w aware of where I was, but I felt something had shifted. As I focused on what Apostle was saying, I realized that I was so presently conscious, but had no feeling in my hands or feet. In this incredibly relaxed state, I started to wonder if I was still breathing, LOL, but then refocused my thoughts on what was being said. I had an encounter during the hour where the Lord showed me a vision of Jesus walking hand in hand with me. I believe this represented the partnership of trust, love, and commitment in our relationship. In this vision, Jesus was handing me seeds and showing me exactly where to plant them. Faith is the seed, prayer is the water, and God's grace is the sunlight that transforms the garden of our lives into a testament of his love. Different countries began to appear, which I know symbolize my service in relation to God's calling upon my life, which widely expands beyond my current location. At one point during the session, I became extremely cold, even though I had a plush blue blanket on my lap. I perceived this as a moment of breakthrough in the session, as I related this feeling of coldness to another encounter that I had had during a fast in 2021. Interestingly enough, when I was experiencing this, my throat got very itchy, and I felt like I was going to have a coughing attack. I thought, Lord, please calm my throat. I don't want to disturb my fellow brothers and sisters. I quickly realized this was a tactic, a, a tactic of the enemy to disrupt my focus and attempt to steal the blessing that the Lord was revealing. Readjusting of my body took place, and before I knew it, I was back to barely feeling my hands and feet. She says, what I received from that day at home was the gift of mental peace, clarity, likeness, direction, and focus. Thank you, Jesus, for shining more light pertaining to my destiny. My spirit had received the knowing of this vision before, but it had never seen it unfold throughout imagery. I know that I, had, I have only been shown a little crumb in comparison to the large meal he has prepared for me. Amen. I am excited to see how much I can grow spiritually through engaging in meditation, specifically home. Thank you so much, Ashley, for your testimony. I'm going to read another one. It comes from Dorcas. So Dorcas says, good morning, church. I want to thank God for divine healing and the gift of meditation bestowed upon us. On January 2nd, I woke up with severe pain on the left side of my mouth. Mm. After making declarations and seeking guidance from the Holy Spirit, I realized it had been three years since my, dental, my last dental visits. Please go to your dentist. Despite the lack of available appointments until early February, I decided to walk in and wait. The dentist discovered that I had been grinding my teeth during the day and in my sleep, causing a crack and pain. Although the procedure was necessary, the earliest opening was in February. I escalated to spiritual authority to update him on the situation, and Apostle advised me on some steps I could take to prevent the grinding. During Bible study on January 11th, I began to get really irritated with the pain, can imagine. As the word was coming forth, we began discussing how to use the word to combat um, darkness. 
Apostle said, when the enemy comes to attack your body, you bring the light. Then he quoted him, then he quoted, he himself took out, took our infirmities. For the remainder of the service and the days onwards, I meditated on that. As the days went by, the pain subsided until it was completely gone. Amen. Although the pain subsided, I figured out the tooth was still cracked. On the procedure day, the dentist began and couldn't find a crack, even after extensive tests. They requested that I go to a specialist because they didn't understand and couldn't proceed with the procedure if they couldn't see the problem. But there was no problem. I declined the specialist's request, knowing Jesus performed the miracle. She then says, I am grateful to Jesus for using this tangible miracle to remind me that meditation is not in vain and that things are happening even when we don't see it or experience it physically. Thank you, Jesus, for this miracle. Thank you, Apostle, for being a portal of light and presenting meditation to the body of Christ. I am forever grateful. All glory be to Jesus. Amen. Let's clap for these testimonies. The Lord is doing amazing things through this movement. Amen. All right. Now let's get into some important things that you need to know to maximize your meditation experience. So first of all, for those in the room, please note that we like to keep things as quiet as possible while we're meditating. So that means moving as little as possible. And this is to ensure that nobody's experience is disrupted. So please, right now, make sure that your phone is either switched off or on do not disturb and make sure that you are comfortable. Secondly, if you need to use the washroom or if you require um, assistance at any point, please feel free to address any of our team members, so the homeboys and the homegirls with this sweater, and we will be really happy to help you. And lastly, um, once the meditation session is over, um, we will have a briefing session about your experience. You'll be able to share what you learned, anything new that you would like to share with Apostle. And um, yeah, pretty much share your experience, while, the experience you had, the, discover the discoveries that you had while you were meditating. And we also want to tell you that pre-orders for the book, um, for Apostle's new book, will be continuing after the meditation session. And we also have a surprise for you. Because if you're able to, if you're eager to get a taste of the book, the ebook is already available on Amazon. You can purchase the book online and anywhere else you can, you would purchase your ebooks. And also, instead of a traditional book signing, Apostle will be hosting an intimate conversation where we'll be talking more about the book. Right, so now it is my great, great pleasure to introduce Dr. Emmanuel Adewusi. Dr. Adewusi is an author, a spiritual guide with a zest for life. With two master degrees under his belt and a brand new PhD in education, he is a true learner with a passion for teaching. As a world traveler with a, who's lived on three continents, Dr. Adewusi is all about connecting people to Jesus Christ and helping them rediscover their true selves. But the journey wasn't always as smooth. As a child, he was shy. He was fearful. He battled low self-esteem, depression, and anxiety. But guess what? He found his light in meditation. For over 21 years, he's been exploring the mysteries of meditation, finding peace in the chaos of life. Since the launch of the Hour of Meditation movement in YouTube, on YouTube in November 2023, people have collectively tuned in for over 15,000 hours with over 152,000 views from 51 countries globally. They join him to meditate not only during the weekly session, but also throughout their daily routine. As a counselor and spiritual advisor, Dr. Adewusi doesn't just talk. He walks the talk. He practices what he, he, what he teaches and what he preaches. 
He uses the power of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, and the experiences of his own journey to help you find hope and rediscover your true identity. So now, if you are ready to unravel the mysteries of meditation, please join me as we welcome Dr. Emmanuel Adewusi. time today. All right. So I want to thank everybody who has made it here today. You need to understand that you're making history. You're making history in ways you can't even realize yet. But most importantly, I want you to know that there's something special that is going to happen to you today. It looks also simple and so easy. Well, you see, simplicity is only possible when a lot of work has been done behind the scenes. I'm sure we can all imagine how solid the foundation of this building is. It's one of the reasons why we can be very secure and safe in this place, regardless of what's happening outside. Uh, so don't be fooled by simplicity. Uh, it is evidence that a lot of work has gone into the foundation. My expectation today, and for as long as this is going to be watched uh, until Jesus comes, is that you would get a touch of God you have never experienced before in the name of Jesus. So very quickly, um, I'll just go over a quick exhortation. Uh, you need to understand that the meditation has started already. And I would appreciate uh, the team members, everyone being as quiet as possible. And let's begin to get into that zone of meditation. Praise God. I'm reading an excerpt from the book. It's the chapter 6 on meditation tools. And this focus is on your natural rhythm. Meditation is a tool for aligning ourselves with the natural rhythm God has etched in us. This might sound crazy, and you may wonder, what is my natural rhythm? There's a natural pace God created you and I to flow in. It is your ebb and flow for speech, for movement, and much more. Meditation brings us back to that center point, making connecting with God easier. This is why people often say they feel centered after properly meditating. The natural rhythm I speak of can only can also rather be creatively understood as your music within. The internal medley increases and decreases at different intensities and points in time. It is the pace or sound within that you lean into to connect with God or operate effectively. Awareness of your natural rhythm can help guide your discovery of various audible sounds or forms of music that can act as supportive medium in meditation. Some people, like myself, have a natural internal rhythm aligned with their speaking pace. My rhythm, for example, as you can hear, is very steady paced. As a result, I realize I only need to lean into that pace to meditate effectively. And the moment I realized that, my meditation became effortless. The next segment here is anointed music. There are times, however, when I use piano instrumentals to aid the process of meditation. For music to be effective in meditation, it must be aligned with the natural rhythm God created you with. In meditation, each person must know what works best for them. The musical rhythm we use should vary depending on our situation. 
We must find a rhythm once we are quiet, we can engage in visualization. So if you try to meditate at the pace that I meditate, you might quickly become frustrated. You may realize that you need something slower or perhaps something faster. Once you try it, you would understand what I am exactly speaking about. Some people naturally move at a faster pace and some listen to solemn music while others need faster music to connect in meditation. I can reckon that most evangelists perhaps would need certain types of songs, perhaps at a faster pace, and this is how it should be. It may take some time to discover your natural rhythm, but do not be discouraged. Thomas Edison said that although he did not know the solution, he knew that 10,000 options weren't the solution. A good place to start the journey can be to identify the sounds and rhythms that disrupt your meditation and then to avoid them. Another starting point can be to explore different instrumentals to aid in your meditation. And now I'll speak about your external environment and how that helps with meditation. Quietness does not necessarily mean the absence of sound. For some individuals, the ideal setting for quiet time is amidst the hustle and bustle of a busy cafe during peak hours. This cafe environment mirrors some people's internal rhythm, placing them into a meditative state and enhancing their focus. Everyone possesses a natural rhythm with which they have been created. For those seeking to explore deeper in this concept, the field of chronobiology is recommended. Chronobiology studies the various rhythmic patterns living organisms experience influenced by light and temperature. I'll speak a bit about the Earth's elements. Numerous factors play a role in our reaction to our external environment. The most effective approach to deepening our understanding is through learning and observation. Rather than self-judgment or condemnation for reacting in less than ideal ways, seek forgiveness and examine the factors that led to your negative response. Life will be much more beneficial and advantageous if we live in it as a researcher instead of as a judge. The main elements on Earth are climate and weather, which is the wind, the atmosphere, which is the air, the lithosphere, which is the land, hydrosphere, which is water, and biosphere, which includes living organisms on the Earth. So I'll speak a bit about the wind. Wind represents the dynamic movement of air within the atmosphere, a fundamental aspect of weather patterns and climate. The movement of air masses, influenced by factors such as temperature and pressure, pressure differences, contributes to wind generation. And then I'll go to air. The Earth's atmosphere is a vital gaseous layer, and it envelops our planet predominantly composed of nitrogen and oxygen. This layer is crucial for sustaining life, regulating climate, and influencing weather patterns. And we have the same for land, we have for water, and the living organisms on the earth. Now, very briefly, before we get much further into meditation, I'll speak about how you interact with your external environment. When people tell me that they do not know how to meditate, I suspect that they have been meditating. They've been trying, rather, to emulate someone else's meditation method and experiences, rather than discovering what uniquely works for them as individuals. For instance, my preferred setting for quietness is complete stillness. By stillness, I mean an absence of movement or distractions. This is my preference. 
However, some people dislike absolute stillness because it ironically amplifies the noise in their mind. These individuals might be the ones who sleep with natural sounds in the background because it counterbalances the stillness within them. For others, motion is necessary to foster a sense of quietness. These are the people who think more clearly in a moving vehicle. Have you noticed how some children fall asleep more easily during a drive than in the silence of their room? Similarly, some find pacing back and forth conducive to entering a meditative state, opening the door to deeper insight and thoughts. Your harmonious interaction with the Earth's elements would influence the tranquility of your internal environment. Now I'll speak about altitude. When the Bible mentions that Jesus went to pray on the mountain, it wasn't solely for the quietness, but also because of the elevation of the mountain. Scientifically, it is understood that ascending in altitude alters atmospheric pressure. While some experience, while some experience discomfort and altitude sickness as they go higher in altitude, some thrive and feel more at peace as they go physically higher. Jesus seemed to be among those who felt more at peace with elevation. Different geographical planes affect how meditative you feel. For some, the higher in the air they go, the better they feel. For others, the closer to the ground they are, the better they feel. For some others, the faster they go physically, the better. And for some others, the slower they go physically, the better. I've also observed that some individuals find being near and or interacting with water enhances their meditation. And I'll round up with a section on light versus darkness. External environments also include light exposure while meditating. For further insight, you can read the Mysteries of Darkness chapter. Just as there are different stages in the sleep cycle, there are deeper stages in the meditation cycle. During meditation, we journey in the light through the word. And as we journey, we pass through darkness. But our destination is brighter light. Where possible, the best environment for meditation could be a dark place. If you're unable to meditate in a dark space, perhaps due to work or other obligations, you can limit the amount of stimulants in your environment. But there are some environments that are very anointed because of the nature of the people that are there. So as we begin to get into meditation today, I want to speak life over this environment and I declare this space blessed in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. If you have not done so already, you want to share this video with your friends and loved ones because I know they are going to be blessed maximally. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Now let's begin to get ourselves in a state of meditation, of quietness. You can close your eyes if you can. And just focus yourself on my voice as I lead you through. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, just start by thanking the Lord. Just start by thanking Him. Just begin to recall back to your mind how God has been good to you. 
wherever you are in the world, just begin to thank the Lord. Just thank Him. I'm sure you can find something to be grateful for. Just be, be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. Just begin to thank Him. Thank Him for yesterday. Thank Him for today. And thank Him for what He's yet to do and what He would even do tomorrow. Just stay focused on my voice. I can assure you the Spirit of God will take you into meditation. Don't allow yourself to be frustrated. Just stay focused on my voice. Just begin to thank the Lord. Just thank Him. Thank Him. Focus yourself on God and your past positive experiences and just thank Him. Express your gratitude. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Yes, that's it. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. The Bible says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, and I will get into his courts with praise. Yes. No one enters God's presence without thanksgiving. We're showing our appreciation to the one who made us. Thank you for yesterday. Thank you for today. Thank you for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Just remain thankful. Thank him for January. Thank him for the month of January. You saw the new year. You crossed over into 2024. Perhaps the Lord has saved you from accidents. Perhaps he has preserved your life one way or the other. Just thank him for it. Just thank him for it. Thank him for the month of February. Yes, just thank him. Just thank him. Forget about how you're seated. Just focus on the Lord. Just focus on him. Just thank him. Thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever you are in the world, just focus your attention on Jesus right now. Yes. It says, be still and know that I am God. Father, I thank you for your hand upon my life. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you because I'm no longer in bondage. I've been set free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Let's continue on in thanksgiving. Continue on in thanksgiving. Now begin to thank him for your environment. Thank him for what you have. Thank him for who you are. Thank him for those around you. Whatever is good came from him. The Bible says every good and perfect gift came from God. Just thank him. Just thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, that's it. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank him for the gifts 
you have. Thank him for the power of God at work in your life. Thank him for every good person around you. Just thank him. Just give him praise. Just thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my life. Thank you for family. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, just thank him. Just thank him. Just bless him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now begin to affirm yourself. Begin to acknowledge that you are a child of God. Begin to acknowledge I am a child of the living God. I am blessed and highly favored. The hand of the Lord is upon my life. Everything works together for my good. I am going somewhere great in life. I am moving forward like never before. I am empowered. I am engraced. Yes. It's important you acknowledge who you are as a child of God. If you are not sure you're a child of God, just acknowledge that you're made in his image. Acknowledge that he loves you. Acknowledge that he knows you by name. Thank you, Jesus, for calling me 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 by name. Thank you, Jesus, for your hand upon my life. Thank you, because everything works together for my good. Thank you, Jesus. My past is blessed. The present is blessed. My future is blessed. Thank you because I'm surrounded by good people. Thank you because I'm a good person. Thank you because your spirit empowers me.
now begin to affirm yourself that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. Jesus died for me. Jesus would do anything for me. I am the beloved of the Lord. Yes. I am the beloved of the Lord. I am the beloved of the Lord. I am loved by God. Yes. I am here to see my father. And I will have an experience with him today. Thank you, Jesus. My eyes see, my ears hear, and my heart perceives. I have faith today. I have faith that I'll see God. I believe I'll have an experience with God. Let's begin to get into visualization. Thank you, Father. Luke chapter 24 and verse 45. And it says, And he opened their understanding. And he, Jesus, opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. So their understanding was closed before and Jesus came and opened it like a box that was locked with chains all over and Jesus came and opened it. Now begin to create that picture from this scripture and the Lord opened their understanding. He opened it. He opened it. He opened it. Now begin to see your understanding being opened. Begin to see the hand of God touching you and opening your understanding. Imagine yourself locked up in a room, in a space. Imagine a hand coming into your heart and opening a door, opening your understanding. And Jesus opened their understanding. Begin to picture that from scripture. My understanding is being opened. It's been opened. It's been opened. What you could not access before, you're accessing it now. Your understanding is being opened to see what you've never seen before, to hear what you've never heard before, to perceive what you've never perceived before. Understanding being opened. Yes. And what he says to one, he says to all. My understanding is being opened. Begin to picture that. He said to the prophets, what do you see? What do you see? You have the power to create the picture. The word is a seed. And your mind is like an artist. So it creates the picture of your understanding being opened. You're watching a movie. 
and you're seeing somebody come, a divine personality coming and opening your understanding. So what you could not see before, you're beginning to see it. What you did not comprehend before, you're beginning to comprehend it. Understanding. Understanding. Yes. Once you see it, just hold on to that picture. And look at it from different perspectives so you immerse yourself in it. My understanding is being opened. My understanding is being opened. If you can't see it, just keep saying it. Just keep saying it. Just keep saying it. And Jesus opened my understanding. And Jesus opened my understanding. And something would click. And something would happen. The Lord appeared again to Samuel by the word of the Lord. Yes. And the Lord opened their understanding. My understanding is being opened now. It's being opened now. Yes. Understanding is being opened. And you shall understand the truth, and the truth shall make you free. My understanding is being opened. I now understand that I can never be poor again. I now understand that I can never be sick again. I now understand that I control my motion, my speed, my emotions, my mind. I now understand that no man has power to make me sad if I don't want to. I now understand that my life and destiny is not in any man's hands, but in my hands. I now understand that the devil has been subdued under my feet, so I don't have to worry about him. And Jesus opened their understanding. Yes. Once you see it, just yield into it. Now you understand that you can never lose a battle again. For he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. I now understand I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and never beneath. And Jesus opened their understanding. Now you understand that the Bible was written for you. It is not a historical book, but a spiritual book. And he opened their understanding. opened their understanding that they may understand scriptures now you understand that your life can change in one day so there's no need to worry about time passing you by your heavenly father dwells outside of time says what a wonderful privilege that we may be called the children of God now you understand that you are a child of God which makes you a God and he 
opened their understanding. Begin to see the words being spoken entering inside you without hindrances, without barriers, without limitations. It just makes sense now. It makes sense now. It makes sense now. That everything you went through is preparing you for what you're going to enjoy. So there's no need crying over spilled milk. Now you understand that trauma cannot hold you down. What you're afraid of is afraid of you. Now you understand if the devil could have killed you, he would have done it a long time ago. You are more powerful than you thought. You are more empowered than you know. Every word a prophet speaks must come to pass. So as these words have been spoken, you are seeing them. And you are holding on to the one that is for you. And Jesus, who has the power in heaven and on the earth, opened their understanding. And what they did not understand before, they began to understand. Things began to make sense. I'm no longer going around in circles. I know where I am going. I am not afraid of my past. I am not afraid of my current situation. Neither am I afraid of my future. Those who abused me no longer have power. Jesus opened their understanding. Nobody can stop you when you have understanding. You are a force to be reckoned with. And Jesus opened their understanding. Continue to picture your understanding being opened. Whatever journey the Holy Spirit takes you on, just stay there. Because in Him is life. In Him is life. Yes. Peace is coming into you right now. I see somebody being healed. I see arthritis disappearing right now. Pain in your wisdom teeth being healed right now. Someone who has not felt love for a long time, the love of Jesus is overwhelming you right now. you are, the love of Jesus is coming upon you mightily. From now, you just begin to know that Jesus loves you. And he opened their understanding. From today, it will be easy to understand any material you read, any lecture you hear. You begin to understand times and seasons. 
It says, and the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Being enlightened. Being enlightened. Yes. That pain in your chest is gone right now. Those demonic spirits that have followed you everywhere are leaving you now. The anxiety, the heaviness, the depression is leaving you right now. And Jesus opened their understanding that they might comprehend scriptures, that they might begin to understand, understand, that you do not walk alone. You are guided. You are led by the Spirit of God. Jesus loves you deeply. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. The Holy Spirit will empower you. You're going to have wonderful relationships. Your life will not end in pain or shame. Your time has come. Your time has come. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, your time has come. The news you've been waiting for has come. Your time has come. This is your acceptable time. Your time has come. No more going around in circles. And he opened their understanding. And you're understanding right now that the word of God is the power of God. Once you receive his word, his power comes into your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Allow the power of God to flow through your body. Don't resist it. Thank you, Jesus. And he opened their understanding. And they began to understand that the only person that can stop you is you. Yes. And you're not going to stop yourself. No more barriers. Every limitation you've placed on your motion is removed right now. You stand up from here today with a decision to be the best, to do your best, to be the best, and to do your best. I decide to be the best. I decide to be the best. I decide to do my best. And he opened their understanding. You are more powerful than you know. He opened their understanding. He opened their understanding. Understanding has been opened. Your mind is opening up. You're being enlightened. You're receiving access to the spiritual realm.
That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And he opened their understanding. I can carry the power of God. I am a habitation of God. For he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Now you understand you are not ordinary. You are not ordinary. You are not ordinary. Yes. 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 That's the peace that comes from Jesus. Your external environment is aligning with the Word of God. Nothing can stop you from now. Yes. And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Now you understand that you hear the voice of God. It's been there all along, but it's getting louder now. It's getting clearer. It's getting louder. It's getting clearer. That heaviness is leaving you right now. In the name of Jesus. Just stay focused on the voice. The Spirit of God will pick you up in due time. Just stay focused on the voice. And Jesus opened their understanding. And Jesus opened their understanding. And Jesus opened my understanding. I'll go back to that picture of Jesus opening your understanding. He's working on your mind your ability to be present, your ability to comprehend, your ability to express your comprehension articulately. Yes. No more stress. Enter the realm of peace like a river. Peace like a river. You stand up with revelation, with understanding. You begin to understand your life and what you've been through. You begin to understand your story. You begin to understand where the Lord is taking you to. You begin to understand you are not an accident. Your life matters to God. 
Yes. And he opened their understanding. And he opened their understanding. Thank you for my understanding being opened. Now I can see. Now I can hear. Now I can perceive. Now I can understand scriptures. My life would never be the same again. Now I understand the voice of God. And the Bible says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And Jesus spoke to them. And Jesus spoke to them. And Jesus is speaking to you, standing in front of you, speaking to you. For he said he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he says he is the word. So Jesus is speaking to you now. I am the light of the world. And because you follow Jesus, you will not walk in darkness. Now begin to visualize yourself walking in the light. The brightest light you can ever imagine. And see yourself using your hands to cover your eyes as you're walking towards a very bright light. He says, I am the light of the world, brighter than the sun. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. Begin to see that darkness leaving you right now. That dark energy, that feeling of demonic spirits in your environment, that heaviness, your seed leaving you now. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That darkness is leaving you now. You will not walk in darkness. Yes. I see a fractured leg being healed right now. Yes. Yes.
I am the light of the world. Because I follow Jesus, I will not walk in darkness. No more darkness in my environment. Jesus says, I will have the light of life. Which means I'm moving from darkness into light. It's not happening tomorrow, it's happening now. It is happening right now. Jesus is removing every darkness from my environment. Just like that, you're saved. Just like that, you're healed. Just like that, you're set free. Just like that. The pain of your childhood is gone. Just like that. That was darkness. The trauma you've experienced is leaving you just like that. He says, I'll not walk in darkness. So right now, I am walking out of this darkness. The multiple traumatic situations no longer have power over you, just like that. Just like that, you have your voice back. Just like that. just like that. The life has changed for the better, just like that. For if you believe, all things are possible. If you believe, all things are possible. Somebody's spiritual eyes are being opened right now. That feeling of tiredness is not from the devil. Yes. Yes, from darkness to light. From darkness to light. I see strange things like a rope-like thing coming out of somebody's mouth. And you're being set free right now. Right now. Right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No more darkness in my home. No more darkness in my life. No more darkness in my environment. I am walking in the light. No more temptations in my environment. I am walking in the light. Yes. Mm. Just visualize it and begin to see it. The darkness is leaving, the light is coming. And that light is Jesus. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you open up for me, I will come in. Oh, yes. Hmm. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody just had an encounter with Joseph. The same Joseph in the Bible. And there was an impartation. To you, it might have just come as a thought. But that was an encounter. The grace for administration and compassion for people has rested upon you. Yes. The favor of God is coming upon somebody. It's coming upon you powerfully. 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 I walk with God the Father. I walk with God the Son. And I walk with God the Spirit. You walk with God the Father. You walk with God the Son. And you walk with God the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. I see somebody looking at the globe and you're holding that in your hand and you're feeling charged in the spirit. The Lord said, I'm making you a global personality. I'm giving you global influence. Congratulations. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. The grace. The grace. The grace. Jesus is the light of the world. And I am the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Yes. Yes. Just continue to see it. Or just follow my voice. There is more. There is more. There is more. Darkness has turned into light. Yes. Yes. Those people with the globe of the world in their hands just keep holding it. 
I see power being transmitted into you. For some of you, your hands are getting heavy. Getting heavy. It takes greater grace to be a worldwide personality. Yes. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Father put Adam to sleep. And he took from his rib and made Eve. And then, the moment the creation was done, nobody woke Adam up. He stood up himself. Yes. Yes. That throbbing headache leaves you now. It cannot steal you anymore. That cough leaves you now. Those symptoms leave your body. Yes. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not your mind, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. We relate with God by faith. For the just shall live by faith and not by sight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Moving from darkness into light, from the unknown into the known from confusion into clarity, from weakness into strength. You are moving from ignorance into knowledge. You're moving from poverty into prosperity. You're moving from condemnation into grace. You're moving from pain into gain. You're moving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus darkness into light and this extends even to your family members especially those under the authority of our Lord Jesus thank you Jesus the light shines in darkness and darkness comprehends it not. I'm living here today to shine in darkness. Yes. Yes, from darkness into light.
from darkness into light. This whole city is being flooded by the light of Jesus. Wherever you are in the world, your city is being flooded by the light of God. Light. Now begin to see this light inside of you. For Jesus is in you. See this light brighter than the sun coming with full speed and coming inside you. Mm. somebody an event took place November 11, 2016 I changed your life the Lord is turning that around right now yes he's turning it around right now from darkness into light from darkness into light from darkness into light from pain into joy from loneliness to having the right people around you from darkness into light yes this light has come inside you. Now you're a mobile illuminator. You're shining your light at school, at work, at your business, at home, everywhere you go. Light. Yes, that's it. That's it. The light, the light, the light shines in darkness, and darkness does not comprehend it. Light, yes, continue to see that light, continue to see that light. Jesus is the light. The wrong people are living your life right now. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. From darkness to light. And it's already happening now. to light. From darkness to light. Jesus. 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 Mm. Isaiah 58 and verse 8. 
Then Jesus spoke to them again. Hmm. Isaiah 58 verse 8 it says, Then your light shall break forth like the morning, and your healing shall spring forth speedily. Your light shall break forth like the morning, and your healing shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you, you, before you, before you, before you. The news of your righteousness, the good name that God has given you, the good word about you go before you. And the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. I'll begin to see your light breaking forth. Your light breaking forth like the morning. The night was very dark. But suddenly the light began to appear in the sky. The only difference is the light is in you now. And your light shall break forth like the morning. And your healing has come speedily. Your healing has come speedily. If there's any pain in your body, stick your mind to the place of that pain and see that pain leaving immediately. The power of God to heal is here. And your healing shall break forth speedily shall break forth speedily, shall break forth speedily, shall break forth speedily. My healing is breaking forth speedily, speedily. Yes, my mind is being healed, my body is being healed, my life is being healed. My past is being healed. Oh, that neck pain, that stiffness in the neck is healed right now. I command your neck to be loose. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody here, a family member has glaucoma. I see that leaving them right now in the name of Jesus. Mm. Every part of your body receives healing right now. Your body is fortified in the name of Jesus. Yes. 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 Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My healing has come. My environment is healed. 
my past is healed. The memory of my past is healed. My future is healed in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Yes. Like a dream. You have been made whole. You have been made right in the name of Jesus. Now begin to see everything that Jesus has done for you right now. Like you're gathering your harvest. Begin to gather them together. Because this time you are not losing anything. You are not losing anything. He has given you understanding. He has given you clarity. Some words that has been cooked has entered into your spirit. Now you understand. You don't argue with the word anymore. Light has come. Revelation has come. The spirit of revelation has come. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord is touching somebody's tongue, touching somebody's lips, and bringing power to your words. It says, are my words not like sharp swords in your mouth? He has touched your lips. He has touched your tongue. Your words are no longer ordinary. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now begin to make declarations. Based on what you've received, begin to make declarations. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Begin to speak life. Your spirit has been charged. Now begin to create with your words. The darkness has left my life. Abundant light has come. I am walking in brighter light, brighter revelation, brighter understanding. I will not remain the same again. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. The words that Jesus spoke has entered into my spirit. Just like that, my life has changed again. Just like that. There's more favor on my life. I'm surrounded by godly relationships. My body is healed. My mind is healed. My body is healed. My mind is healed. 
I am strengthened and empowered. Emmanuel, your time has come to move forward again. Nothing can stop my advancement. Nothing can stop my progress. I am an embodiment of divine possibilities. Nothing is impossible when I show up into a space. I am an embodiment of divine possibilities. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Everything is working together for my good. I am going forward. I am going higher. Things are getting better. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My words now carry more power. In the name of Jesus. My words carry more power. In the name of Jesus. Now just begin to thank God for what he has done for you today. What you have seen and what you have received by faith. For without faith it is impossible to please God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just thank God for what has happened to you today. Your thanksgiving would help to preserve your blessings. Just thank him. Jesus, I thank you for exceeding my expectations today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. There are some people here today who have experienced the light of God. You don't know Jesus, but during this session, you found Jesus. Or better still, Jesus found you. And you want to make him your Lord and Savior. This peace you experienced, you want to continue to experience it. wherever you are in the world or even here in person, you want to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. Just repeat this prayer after me. Mean it from the depths of your heart and say with me, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today Please forgive me my sins. I know you died for me on the cross and was raised on the third day that I may be saved. Jesus, come into my heart today and make my life your own. I boldly declare today that I am born again. 
and a child of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, congratulations. Wherever you are, right here in the world, according to scripture, now you're born again. So we're very, very happy for you. But we'd love to hear from you. For those online, just go on our website. The address is cccghq.org slash saved. And fill out the form you find there completely. We'd love to send you materials to help you grow. In the name of Jesus. Now, to those who are here who said the prayer, we'd love to give you a book. So if you can just wave your hands, we'll have some people come to you and just give you that book. If you said the prayer after me today, just wave your hands wherever you are and somebody will come to you. Amen. Awesome. What a mighty God. Now, I want to speak to those quickly who are here for the first time. You're joining us in meditating for the very first time in this place, not technically here, but as a ministry, you're coming here for the first time, for the first time. Is there anybody like that? Just wave your hands. Just wave your hands. Wow. Wow. So we'll have some of our team members just come to you quickly. If you can just wave your hands again so they can see you, they'll come to you. We have some in front here, they'll come to you. We have some right in front, just come quickly. Hallelujah, just come to them. Yes, you gave your, you, you're here for the first time joining us. We have people right here in front, just come. We have them here. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Wow. Praise God. Were we blessed today? You know, the beautiful thing about meditation is, in many cases, you don't know what has happened to you yet until things begin to settle. It's like you went to sleep and you had a dream. Sometimes after you have woken up, you didn't realize what happened until much later in the course of the day. So when you come out of meditation, you don't want to allow discouragement to flood your mind. I wanted this to happen. I wanted that to happen. You just move by faith. And you begin to see that as you continue in thanksgiving, what came to you in the course of meditation will begin to come back from your spirit into your mind. And that is what we call inspiration, where it just begins to flow. Songs begin to flow. Ideas begin to flow. Solutions to problems just begins to come. I've been doing this by the grace of God for many years. And it's so, it's so exciting to see how God exceeds my expectation every single time. And it will get to a point where it just become your natural way of doing things. Praise God. Is there anybody else who came who is here newly and nobody has spoken to you yet? Maybe they missed you. Just wave your hand so we can make sure we get to you. You're here for the first time, joining us in this ministry for the first time, and nobody came to you right now. For those who are online, I'm sure there is a code, there's a QR code you can scan there. Please do that. We would love to be in contact with you so you can hear more from us as the days, the weeks, the months, the years go by in Jesus' name. Now, very quickly, we're going to have a debrief. What does that mean? For many of you, you are meditating for the first time, or even perhaps it's not your first time. Um, in our debriefs, I like to take questions so that I can, I don't want anybody to live here with confusion or to live here with unanswered questions because that can open the gap to confusion. So this is our debrief time. If you have questions, um, those who are familiar with us, we know we, we like to take questions. Just wave your hands. The first few ones might seem a, a bit interesting, but I'm sure after you've heard one or two questions, it will be easier for everybody to begin to ask questions. So maybe you experience something you would need clarity about. Just wave your hands. 
We'll get a mic to you and take your questions. I'm sure someone is checking out those online also. Yes. Yes. Any questions today? Or maybe you want to share your experience. We're going to have a section for testimonies shortly. But you want to share your experience. This is a different space. We have a hand up here. It's a different space here. But I know many, many things, great things happen to you. Please go ahead. Um, I have a question. Yes. Were you walking around during the session? <laughs> Is anybody who has an answer to that question? Was anybody else that felt like I was walking around? Yes, 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 yes. So the answer is yes. Okay. Now, don't ask me how. That's, that's for the next meditation conference. Amen. Awesome. Yes, any, anybody else? Anybody else? Any question? No question is a dumb question, trust me. Uh, we all have questions, and I want to make sure we leave here today with answers. With answers, yes. I think it's so beautiful that the snow is falling. Maybe not so much for your vehicle, but... Uh, uh, I'll yes. Have a, sorry, yes. I'll have a question over here. Please go ahead. Uh, what is the meaning of when you see a flood? When you see a flood. Can you give me the context of yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, I was standing on top of a mountain once again. Um, this is the second time I had the same uh, occurrence. Standing on top of a mountain, and from there, just seeing water coming and... And I guess cleansing or uh, really no idea. Just a large uh, amount of water just coming through her and uh, yeah, just covering and, the mountain. And that's all? Yeah. Just flood? Yeah. Did it sweep you away or you were still standing? I'm still standing on top of the mountain. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> it is really saying either you have been through tumultuous times or challenging situations or do I even say this? Or maybe it's still ahead of you. The flood is coming, but the good news is you're still going to stand. All right? Yes. Hello. Hi. Um, so I came in with like a thousand thoughts, but they were like really, really angry thoughts. Like literally a thousand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, as I'm going through the intense thoughts, I just kept blacking out. And yes. then towards the end, I don't remember anything, like at all. So I want to know, what does that mean? You know, you, you can please be seated. You know, the Bible speaks about the blood of Jesus washing us clean. The Bible also says that the word of God is like water that cleanses us. So as we're going through our meditation, what you considered as blacking out was when the Word of God, by the Spirit of God, was washing away those thoughts. And of course, the blacking out also signifies that those thoughts had spiritual forces backing them up. So now that you don't remember any of that is an indication that um, those demonic influences are all gone. So congratulations. Amen. I can imagine that all the thousand thoughts are all gone. Not one is remaining. Anybody else, you have a question, just wave your hands. Don't overthink it. Don't think it and think it. We have a hand here. Don't overthink it. You have a question, just raise up your hand and we'll get to you right here. We'll get to you. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Is the passing of time uh, an indication that something happened? Like if. What do you mean by the passing of time? Like if you didn't notice any time move at all. Like when I opened my eyes, it was almost like I just got here. Good. Now, the Bible tells us, now this is very important, so please pay attention. The Bible tells us that God is not in time. So we are the ones that are operating within the boundaries of time. Morning, afternoon, evening, now the time is you know, past 10 a.m. 
But God does not see time moving. So, that happens to us when we have left the physical realm and we are in a spiritual realm. In a spiritual realm, time means nothing. It is why you see us start to meditate and you not realize that a whole one hour and 20 minutes went by. Have you ever been in a place and you're just hoping that the time would move, yet the time is not moving? But yet, you're just here meditating or wherever you are in the world and time just moved. It's because you had an encounter with the Spirit. In our case, the Spirit of God. Again, you might not remember what happened, but every time you have an encounter with God, whether spectacular or not, it is still supernatural. Spectacular meaning it has bells and whistles and noise and thunderings or lightnings. Sometimes it doesn't come that way. It's just a still, small voice or a very subtle experience. So back to your question, it means that you actually had an encounter with the Spirit. In this case, the Spirit of God. Amen. I'll take three more questions. Now I said three, more hands have come up. <laughs> yes, three more questions. Yes, please. Um, yes. I felt like uh, got a word about like ascension, like a time of ascension. Um, I guess I'm just seeking clarity about that. So, so can you give me more details? So you got that word. So you just heard a time of ascensions. Yeah? Yeah, and I, it also felt like throughout the um, hour, like my head kept wanting to tilt up. Like I felt I kept getting led to tilt my head up and then um, just behold, I guess. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yes. I, I think that word is very, very clear, straightforward. You are going to experience a time of ascension. So once again, congratulations. Okay? Awesome. Yes, please. Right? Yes, please. Yes. Um, I'm wondering what the best way is to hold on to certain words that we may have gotten during our meditation. Mm. Um, I found that I got a lot of freedom from this session, and mm. I felt that feeling before, but sometimes... Um, you lose I feel it. like, yeah, I go yeah. about the rest of my day or the rest of my week, and like those burdens come back to me. So how do we hold on to that that's, freedom? That's get? a very excellent question. You know, you've just touched on something that so many people experience. They come to the house of God. They spend time in prayer. They read the word. They meet with the servant of God, whatever it is. And they experience something good, but then life begins to happen. So one of the best ways is to write it down. Somebody said that ink gives life to words. They were speaking from the perspective of, of physically writing. But that's the same with also documenting something. You writing it down is an act of faith. It's like you believe that you, if you keep it in your mind, I can assure you, you didn't believe that that happened. Writing it down is an act of faith. Now, if I came to you now and I said, oh, I want to give you um, a credit card, credit card information, mine, not somebody else's, uh, I wouldn't, but just as an example. And there's unlimited, you have unlimited access to it, and no, 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 um, no, no what? Expiration? No, no, no limit, no limit to how much you can spend. Now, would you try to cram the numbers? Or you, you say, no, 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 wait, 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 let me write it down. Because I don't want to miss even one, one, uh, 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 one number, one digit. So when you get these things, while it is fresh, you want to write it down. And number two, you think on it. Whatever you keep in your mind is what powers your life. You think on it. You think on it. It's why after times like this, 
you know, the devil has been here for a long time. He knows how to orchestrate things, offense, and someone coming to get you angry and frustrated and, you know, oh, wow, it's snowing again. No, it's, 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 snow is beautiful. Look at how innocently it's just falling. <laughs> it's like, I mean no harm. <laughs> you know, so you, you, you have to make sure you allow yourself to have a good disposition of things. Nothing is a coincidence. So those are two primary ways. You write it down and you continue to think on it so it stays fresh in your mind. All right? I'll take the third one. Actually, hmm. we, we had the hand up here before, right, right, right in front. Yes, please go ahead. Hmm. Um, so as you were uh, speaking, uh, I saw a container and um, the more you spoke, the container became charged up with um, power, and it was yes. actually shaking to a point. Mm. Um, and then uh, it got handed to me. So is that an impartation or? Sorry, what, what was handed to you? Um, a container. A and container. It, yeah, and it was charged up with um, like light and power at the same time. Mm. So um, after a while, it was handed to me. So is that more of an impartation? Or yes. Absolutely. Yes, over there. Um, I have a question. At the beginning of visualization, my head became very heavy. I became very dizzy to a point I had to tilt my head. And then I felt very cold wind inside of me going up and down more than five times. Cold wind. Cold wind going inside oh. of me more than five times. And then my physical body started to shake. Mm. What does that mean? That's a very good question. Um, you, you know, it's so amazing how it is one word and the same Holy Spirit, yet doing different things to different people at the very same time. Now, because this has been streamed and we have more people here, I'll not go into your personal details, all right? Um, now, lest I forget, I want to know that person who had an incident on November 11, 2016. Whoever that person is, I want to meet with you uh, once we're done here. Now, going, going back to that, um, obviously, that was a deliverance process taking place. All right? Um, I wouldn't say the specific spirit involved, but that was a deliverance process taking place. Um, but how did you feel at the end? How did you feel at the end? Please give her the microphone, yes. Um, I feel a bit light. Yes. But I still feel there is power, the power of God inside of me. I feel like my body is shaking a bit, but it's not manifesting fully. That's, that's good. So, so, so something was removed, and the power of God took that place. That's a summary of what happened to you. So what I'll say is you continue to enjoy that move of the power of God in you, you know, and, um, and keep track of the words that are being generated inside of you as a result of that power flowing. All right? Good. Yes, please. Hello. Um, me, I just had a question that whenever I meditate, the power of God comes very strongly where I can, I don't feel tired. I feel I can have my hands up for hours and I love it a lot. But what I do would like sometimes is to receive a vision from God or an image or something. My mind goes totally blank. It would be just light and the feeling is there, mm. but I don't seem to just like receive something, you know, but I'm still happy because I have that peace and everything and I like you said after that I will see that manifest in my life mm. but I'm just wondering why I never can have any picture at all mm. nothing <laughs> <laughs> it is one of the things that I documented in the book uh, which will be made available to us we'll be hearing about that uh, shortly now what office do you believe you're in uh, teaching teaching office awesome mm -hmm. um, you are 
I believe very strongly from what you said and from my understanding of, of who you are uh, that there's a lot of healing power that the Lord has given to you. Okay? Um, you know, there are different phases in our journey with God. Uh, what, what is happening to you in this phase is that the Lord is charging you up. That's, that's number one. Number two, um, this, this one is very interesting. Number two is, you actually don't need to see a picture. What the Lord is telling you is that you can create the picture. You know, some people are given food while some are given the ingredients to cook the food. The power, if you remember what I taught at Friday Night Prayers last week Friday, I spoke about the spirits being stirred up and the words that come up. So the Lord is stirring your spirit. And while you're stirred up, you can look at anything or any word, and you by yourself with the power of God can create those pictures. So in the very beginning, God made all kinds of things. Then he now made Adam. Then Adam came, and then God told Adam to now begin to name the animals. Adam might have wondered, no, 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 I don't know how to do it, but he just started talking and giving them names. And of course, one of my favorites is Hippopotamus. You know? <laughs> of course, we know he didn't speak English, right? But he gave it a name. So, so, so you have creative power. Can I shock you? I also don't see so much when I meditate. But I know enough to know that once my spirit is charged, I can create any picture I want to create. At the end of the day, what, what you need is, what is the outcome from the vision that you've experienced? So while somebody else is giving a vision, I can create a vision. At the end of the day, we'll get to the same destination. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yes, I'll take a few more questions. Yes, please. Um, so for me, I found that I, each time I meditate, I come out of meditation laughing <laughs> every time. Yes. Why is that? And today I experienced like a warm wind just blow through my knees. Through Why? your knees. Yes. So that's healing. Amen. That's healing. That's, that's, that's definitely healing. Uh, number two, the laughter is, is you know, is the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible says, he who sits in heaven shall laugh. So when you visit the one that is laughing, you sometimes come out of that visit also laughing. And then you take that laughter and then spread it to other people. And everybody begins to laugh as everybody's laughing now. Thank you. Praise God. Yes, anybody else? Sorry? Oh, online. So we're going to take that shortly. Yes, Pastor Edgar. So my question is, I don't know, have you ever heard of um, the characteristic called aphantasia? Called? Aphantasia. Can you explain that, please? So it says that there are some people that can't, um, I'm just going to read it right now. Mm. So it's a characteristic some people have related to how their mind and imagination work. So. Mm. Having it means you don't have visual imagination, mm. keeping you from picturing things in your mind. Mm. People don't often, or people often don't realize they have it, and it is not a disability or medical condition. Mm. Now, for someone that might be difficult for them to visualize. picturing things and imagining mm. things, so how do you navigate that? Mm while you are meditating or while you're trying to, mm. especially when you're in that segment of visualization mm. without being, getting frustrated? That's a good question. But the question I'll ask such a person is, uh, who diagnosed you with that? The, the, is the, and I, I don't think you're speaking for yourself. That, that's the main question I'll ask such a person because sometimes people experience challenges and instead of breaking through the challenge, they accept it as a way of life. If I said green apple now, it's almost nobody that cannot visualize a green apple. Maybe it's the one someone has eaten out of. Maybe it's a brand new one. There's almost nobody. You know, um, but one major thing that affects people's ability 
to visualize his trauma. We cannot overestimate the danger of allowing trauma to remain in your life. It, it damages people. So, so, and many times people don't know that they've actually been through situations that has damaged the, their, their core nature. So going back to your question, how should such a person, if they really are, how should such a person meditate so they don't feel frustrated? There are some people that for whatever reason in their meditation, they find that visualizing pictures is not the easiest for them. Not in, I don't believe it's impossible for anybody, or maybe it's just easier for some than others. What I'll tell such people to do is repetition. Repetition. This is where in some other religions, um, they have learned to repeat mantras or to repeat psalms or repeat statements or to repeat certain words. As those words are being repeated, those words themselves are creating pictures. Number two, very, very important. Imagine, and I do this when I'm praying in the spirit also, speaking in tongues. Imagine you can see the words coming out of your mouth. So let's say, for example, I am meditating on, and he opened their understanding. I might not be able to see a picture easily about understanding being opened, but I can be repeating, and he opened their understanding, and he opened their understanding, and I am seeing and he. If you can't imagine pictures, you can imagine the letters, and he opened their understanding. The important thing is that the word takes you into the spirit. Then what happens when you're in the spirit now is, is a different ballgame mentally. We just need that word to be a transportation system to take us from this realm to a spiritual realm. And the moment you get there, whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do is now up to the Holy Spirit. Praise God. I'll take one last, two, three last. Ah, okay. Just capture those whose hands are already up, and then I'll address them. I think there's just four of them, and then we'd, we'd move on. Please go ahead. Thank you. Hi. Um, for me, it's two things. The first one was just, um, I just have so much faith in the name of Jesus. I have been... Um, so in, much faith in what? In the name of Jesus, the how name. powerful it is. Yes. Um, and I guess this session kind of like solidified that for me because... I was reading the book of art, and it talks about just like the faith. When we have the faith in the name of Jesus, like so much can be done for us. And I remember feeling when we were praying and we were saying in the name of Jesus, I felt so powerfully, I felt so strong that my prayers have been answered. Yes. And um, it's just an experience that kind of like solidified that, that, that reading, my, 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 my devotion for me this morning. And also... I wanted to ask, um, you said something about when, when Adam went to rest and God created Eve, Adam just woke up. I am, I'm not sure if you explained how he woke up, but I lost. I, I, I didn't hear the rest of what, what else you said after that, but I wanted to ask, like, how did he wake up? Like, what, how did that happen without God waking him up? You know, like telling him to like, wake up type of thing. So, so thanks for sharing your experience, and I, I, I concur. It is why the Bible says we pray in the name of Jesus because of the power in that name. Philippians chapter 2 says, and he has been given the name above every other name, that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess. So we thank God for that. <clears throat> Number two, how do we come back? You know, many people here would testify to the fact that when we are meditating and you drift off, um, without anybody recalling you, without any alarm, you just come back when I'm talking about sharing the sinner's prayer. Anybody want to confirm that? <laughs> so it, it is the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is an intelligent spirit. <laughs> it, it's actually important to know that. It's an intelligent spirit. It's why... 
when people fall under the anointing, you never hear. We have catchers to catch people just because we want to be nice. But if, even if there was nobody to catch them, and I was laying hands on people here and they were falling, nobody's head would be broken. It's very strange. Because the Holy Spirit is, except if it was a demon doing all that, if it's the Holy Spirit, everybody, yes, they might feel some aches after, <laughs> just to remind them to walk in wisdom. But, uh, so, so it's the Holy Spirit that brought Adam back, that this is the right time. You know, there were times where you thought you set your alarm, but you didn't. And um, it still happened to me a few days ago. And uh, the Lord just brought me up at the right time. Otherwise, I might have missed the service. <laughs> and they say, where's well, Apostle? No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's in the realm of the Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Yes, please. So I, I'm, uh, I'm going to try to say this. I'm like, I haven't stopped shaking since the service, the thing ended. Um, sometimes, you know how when um, you feel like the Holy Spirit or the presence of God, you kind of get like a chill. Mm -hmm. I always get a chill. But not only is this the first meditation I've been in that I actually didn't fall asleep, but also I didn't feel time pass by at all. Like to me, it felt like it was five minutes. But not only that, but I was shaking the whole time. And then at one point, you were talking over and over about um, opening understanding and the light. And like one of the gentlemen said that he had a container that he saw filled with light that was charged. I had the same where I felt that container was like a jar and it was like almost like I could see a meteor come from like the sky land in the jar and it was just sparks just sparks over and over and over and over again and then even though i was feeling chills and shaking the whole time in that moment it was almost like i felt like a warm hug in a weird way from that and then even after that warm feeling went away and i went back to like shaking it was i could still see i was just staring at the jar the whole time and it was just sparks and to the point that even when you finished I couldn't even open my eyes because I couldn't stop staring at this jar and I really at first wasn't going to say this but I really want a confirmation as to what I was watching like what was this jar of sparks like I I've never felt seen experience that in my life to the point I'm still shaking like I, I don't know the summary of that is that Jesus loves you <laughs> number two Jesus sees you and number three Jesus has blessed you you see over a period of time you begin to see the contents of that jar open up into your life. Favor. Now, one of the elders who is a part of this movement in a different country uh, spoke to me yesterday, and among other things, she said that um, she was telling me about how she got um, revelation after using the hour of meditation. She uses it to sleep every night now. And before the hour is over, she has already gone. Uh, it's better than melatonin or anything else. You know, but the point I want to make is this. She said, he said, Apostle, you know what? Now, when, before when people saw me, they used to be angry at me. Their disposition used to be like anger. But now people are smiling. People are, you know, they're, they're in a foreign country right now, a predominantly Muslim nation. You know, he said, even in the train, uh -uh, Little kids and different people were just running to me, wanting to take pictures with me. Now, the question is, at what point did that change? I can assure you it was an experience like this that she had, that she didn't even know that she had. But all she realized was, the way it used to be is no longer the way it is now. You just begin to see favor. You begin to see blessings. So whatever good thing is, was, was and still is in that jar, you begin to see it manifesting in your life in due time. Finally, 
Sometimes God does not give people details because he knows his children. There are some of his wonderful children, if he tells them what he has done, um, they will tear it apart. Unknowingly. You know how some kids tear apart their favorite toys? They will tear it apart themselves and they will bring it back to him and say, okay, it's fault, fix it. So in many cases, he doesn't tell us what he has done. So we have faith. But you just begin to see that manifesting in your life. So congratulations. I think there's one more hand. Yes. Yes, yes. please. Um, so I'm just curious because um, in previous meditations where I was seeing the time and then I checked the time and it was the same time. But so that didn't happen. But I did see like 921 while we were just that time was sorry just there. in previous meditations. The yeah. time was not moving. No, no, no. I saw the time yeah. and then I checked my watch and it, watch and it was the same time. And then you oh. explained that I needed to rest or something like that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> so this time I I just saw 921, but I wasn't checking the time or anything. So I just wanted to know if it's the same thing or if it's something different. So you saw 921. Just 921. While you like, were like meditating. It was, yeah, like it was. But you didn't check to see. No, I didn't check. In reality. No. Mm. No. So it's possible that it was still the same time. I think it. I don't think it was because the last time I, like it was oh, way I past that time. Oh, I see what you're saying. Before, yeah. Mm. Before we started. I'll speak so. to you afterwards. Okay. Okay. Praise God. So thank you so much. Uh, sorry, we have one more. Oh, for those online, let's take those online, please. Yes. Awesome. So online, there are many, many thanks and amens and resounding gratitude to God for various experiences. Mm. Um, and I'll just read some of the ones that are written out along with their questions. Okay. Um, the first I want comment is from Eunice, and she says, when we started meditating, I directly saw a door being opened and there was water. It felt like a river and a beautiful background on that side. There was peace through it all. What does that mean? I'll just summarize and say the, 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 the presence of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Mm. The next comment is from Angel. She says, what does it mean the, when there's a blow in the air, it's like a flush? The first one you read was Eunice, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And this is Angel. Yes, Angel. Mm -hmm. um, it says, what does it, mean, what does it mean when there's a blow in the ears, in, your, in her ears, like a flush? A lot of times it means a spirit is being expelled. Sometimes it's like a hollow sound. Sometimes it's like the air in an environment was just sucked out, right? Um, it is an indication. Now, if you were there in the environment where Daniel described, when the angel that was sent to bring his blessing, his answer was held back and there was war. If you were in that environment, you would have felt it most likely a hollow sound. You would have felt like you know ringing in the ear you'd have felt like you know like how some people feel when they're in the air right uh, and there's like the the atmospheric pressure has changed it is an evidence that that spiritual forces are within a space some people even feel that when they encounter someone who is demonized for example you know there are many ways we discern the presence of demonic spirits and that is one of them but the important thing is what would have happened after they were now done the meditation, that there should have been perfection and there should be you know, a, a, a restoration of calm completely, okay? Awesome. Thank you, doctor. I'll just take one more. Yes, yeah. sir. Um, the next comment says, is from Cheryl. and She says, how about feeling like I'm here for a long time, for about six hours? There was water rising, and I was above the waters. Though it's rising, I was above it and not touching the water. Mm. Mm. That's just a, a statement, yes, sir. Okay. Um, there is an, another question. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Um, this question is from Rachel. Um, she says, "My heart was overwhelmed with joy that I was crying during the meditation. Any thoughts on that?" We, we bless God. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take one last one, and then we'll get into testimonies. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, the last comment. Sorry. Uh, feel free to put in your comments on the video. 
Um, I, I, I love those comments. I go through them, I read them. Uh, it's really amazing and encouraging. So please grab your phones while you know, she's speaking. Just go to the video on my page. If you have not subscribed, um, ask God to forgive you first. And then you go ahead and subscribe and then put in your comments, okay? Please, please go ahead. On the next few are just statements. Um, I can read them out, sir. Just, just read a few, awesome. yeah. Awesome. Um, the first one is from Abigail. says, yes, true talk, my apostle, praying hands. Um, the next one is from Yen. He says, this was very comforting experience. Praise Jesus for your calling, doctor. Um, Gabrielin says, thank you, Jesus. This was a reiterating for me of the power God has put in me, seeing a scepter in my hand and a small globe of the world. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. So please put in your comments, put them in very quickly, and then we can now welcome Christian to walk us through some testimonies. Amen. Let's clap our hands, please. Hello, everyone. Please, let's give a round of applause for Dr. Emmanuel Debussy again. Awesome. Thank you, doctor, for this amazing session. It was fantabulous, as you see. <laughs> so I'm sure we all had a wonderful time, right? Awesome. You know what? You were part of something amazing, something the first of its kind, and you'll be able to tell your family and their children and their children and their children that you were here at the very first hour of meditation. Before we take the testimonies, I just want to encourage you to follow hour of meditation on Instagram. So the handle is at hour of meditation. So while you are still on your phones, please do that. Okay, right now we will take some testimonies in house. So if you would like to share your experience of what God did during the hour of meditation, any experience that you had, any wonderful testimony of what God did today, please raise your hand and we will pass you a mic. Right. All right, so um, two things. Um, the first one was when, I believe it was during the exhortation when Apostle was talking about um, the different types of quieting or or what quietness means to different people. Um, I hadn't realized that for me, quietness actually means movement. Um, so what I realized is before I would, you know, force myself, well, I feel like celebrity. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, uh, I would force myself to, um, to quiet everything, like to be in a very quiet space. Um, but I realized that actually what I need is noise and movement, like a busy space. Um, let's say, for example, in the middle of downtown, the hustle and bustle noise. And the Lord was explaining to me that it's because that movement represents people moving. It represents people walking ambitiously to uh, pursuing their vision. And that's kind of where I find peace. And that's where I find quietness. Um, so that's one. The second thing that God did for me today, which I was really, really hoping he would do for some time now, mm -hmm. is I realized that um, there was a limitation to my ability to receive and give love fully. I'm not sure at what point in time um, I had lost that, but what happened is I, uh, I believe Apostle said something and all of a sudden like I felt my heart open, like literally like a door open. And then I saw myself like hugging people. I honestly used to think I wasn't a hugger, but I believe that was actually a lie um, because I could see myself hugging people and feeling so much joy and so much love going back and forth. So I wanted to really, really thank God for that because I'm really excited for the month of love because I knew that that was an issue, but the Lord has already delivered me. And yeah, so I just want to thank God for that. Praise God. Hallelujah. And please, if you are online, please feel free to leave your testimonies in the comment section also. We have hands in the front. Thank you, sir. It was a very amazing session. Um, while you led us through um, divine understanding, I had an out-of-body experience where I saw myself. Uh, I walked towards the light and I saw myself, I could see my brain, see the gray matter and 
the light I was that was shining, my brain became that color of, of that light. And when I walked away, my brain became like neon lights and it became like what? Neon lights, like okay. like it was mm -hmm. glowing. Mm. And um, I believe I've been parted with understanding. So I really thank God for that. Praise God. Praise God. Um, I want to thank God for healing. There is a point during the meditation where Apostle talked about someone who has someone in the family with glycoma. In that moment, I think I was sleeping, I don't know. Once he just said that, I felt a sensation in my face. and like In your where? In my face. Your face. And numbness in my hands. And like mm. in the sensation in the face, it was like something was pulling, like something was coming out like of the face. And I've been believing God for healing for this person for a very long time. And I thank God for she has been healed. Amen. Wow. Wow. Anyone else? Wow. 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 Yes, uh, Apostle, thank you for this uh, session. Um, so my wife and I have been praying for a name um, for quite a while now for one of the twins. And um, I remember talking to you a couple weeks ago. Uh, well, my wife had a couple of names in mind, but... You know, one when we agreed, and with the other, I was shaken about it. Mm -hmm. But when I had a meeting with you, you had to ask me to ask the Lord by the end of that week, which was two weeks ago, mm -hmm. to give me that name. But um, I had faith, I asked, but, you know, because I was also going back to work, I'm like, mm -hmm. it could kind of be a tricky situation with my focus and all. Mm -hmm. And then last week I said, oh, the Our Meditation Conference is coming up. I have to get that name at the conference. Mm. So while we were seated here, by the grace of Jesus, I've received that name for one of the twins, and I'm grateful for it. Wow. Wow. Amazing. There's a proud wife just smiling there from ear to ear. Amen. Yes, please. Um, thank you, Apostle, for this session. Um, so... For me, what happened, how much detail can I give? Protect your privacy, please. All right, all right. Um, so for me, basically what happened was, as soon as you were saying like, oh, Jesus loves you, like he would do anything for you type of thing, I, I fell into a vision bringing me back to a place where um, something traumatic had happened that really just stopped me from being like vulnerable with people. And um, the thing that you teach us about how you can like basically just go into a vision and like change the outcome, that's basically what happened. And like I got the healing from that. And um, I actually started crying so much. I was like, oh my gosh, there's people around. I don't want to ruin their experience. But yeah, so I believe I got healing from that because every time I run into somebody, they can yap in my face and I'm like, how can you share all this information with a stranger? I just can't do that. And yeah, so. There we go. <laughs> nice. So now you're going to be sharing things with strangers? No, <laughs> but I believe. I got kidding. the grace to be vulnerable again because absolutely yeah wow praise God praise God <laughs> anyone else want to share okay. praise God thank you Apostle for an amazing session um, I had been asking God for direction in a particular area and I believe that tonight I received um, impartation of knowledge and understanding. Um, so at the beginning, um, I saw myself as a little girl, and I was holding the hand of a divine personality. I believe it was the Holy Spirit. Um, and so he was leading me, and he was um, just assuring me that I'm not alone, and he will, he will carry me through till the end. And then um, at one point, I saw that he put, he put me on his back. Um, I was still a little girl. He put me on his back, and he said, we're going to go somewhere. 
and far off I could see like a very large castle on top of a of a hill so I thought that's where we were going mm. um, so we were going but then inst instead of going straight we turned left and once we turned I saw myself like I was on my feet um, as an adult and then he led me into like a really dark cave and I was wondering like why we were going there but I just followed um, so we entered into uh, this really dark cave and once I got inside, it was like, it looked nothing like a cave inside. It was very bright and it was like a really big library, like very tall. And I was looking around and it was like, instead of books, there were treasures, treasures everywhere. And I was just like spinning, looking at the place, it was like just in wonder. And what the Holy Spirit was doing, he was like, he would take items on the shelf and he would show me and he would explain and I would just like understand. And there were just so many different things in that place. It was huge. And a globe that you mentioned was um, one of the items um, in that cave. And I think for the rest, the rest of like the, the meditation session, I was just in the cave, just exploring and just, yeah. Um, so I believed I received an impartation from that and other personal um, revelations from that as well. So thank you. Praise God. Praise God. I just want to quickly mention before we continue, um, unfortunately all the comments that you're putting in the chat right now will be gone after the event is over, after the stream is over. So we encourage you to go back once the stream is actually over so that you can put comments that will stay forever. <laughs> So we can take three more testimonies. Okay, so um, one of the previous hour uh, meditations, I'd mentioned that um, I kind of saw myself looking down at the globe or the map of the world, and you know, the Lord was showing me some things. So today, um, I actually had the globe in my hand. And that was when, after that, you mentioned, you know, you had somebody, you're saying that and all. So I had the globe in my hand, and I was wondering what the difference was between when he was showing me the globe and now that I have it in my hand. So um, what the Holy Spirit told me was that then he was showing me what was actually possible about me being the solution to world problems. But now, finally, I, this is evidence that I've accepted um, to, I've, I've accepted control of how far I want to go or the speed I want to go. And the scripture, he, he just kept saying, as far as you can see, as far as you can see, as far as you can see. And that was even before the globe um, got into my hand. So he said, as far as you can see. And then he brought the scripture. I had to check it um, after. So it says, um, ask of me, I will give you the nations um, for your inheritance and the end of the earth for your possession. Anyway, that's scripture. So I just thank God because um, it kind of corroborates something you said at Friday Night Prayers that the Holy Spirit will only take you as far as you want to go. Even though I thought that the, the testimony of seeing the globe was it, I, I feel like this is now it where I'm like, okay, this is as far as I'm saying. Now he's saying, just move. Now you have the grace to move. So I mm. thank God for that. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Um, I don't want to go home without sharing what God did for me today. Um, so I didn't, have, I didn't have the greatest sleep last night. And this, I, when I woke up, I woke up with, um, with a headache, kind of like pressure, like on top of my head or whatever. And um, right before the meditation started, um, the headache went away. And then before the meditation finished, um, my finger, this one, it, like I was having uh, issues with it for like over a, a little a little over a week now, and it was like really sore and like numb. It hurt so bad. Like mm. I was trying to like crack it and I couldn't do it. And I'm like trying to like pull it, trying to rip it off, and I, I couldn't. And anyway, so right before the meditation finished, um, my finger was healed. I felt a, I felt a release, and then my neck as well. And I feel great right now. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. We have one last testimony in the front, please. Wow, wow, wow. 
So thank you, Apostle, again, for the wonderful session. I just wanted to share one thing. Um, there were a few things, but they're slowly trickling in. Um, so when I did feel you walking around, it was giving um, come and see vibes. <laughs> so at that point, I kind of fell under. And when I was there, a lot of stuff was happening. But for some reason, I didn't remember any of it until you said something towards the end about everything coming back to you. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that came back to me was me at a home conference, but it wasn't anywhere I've ever been. It was in a huge, huge like stadium-like space. And I was there with my little camera. <laughs> and it was, just, it was just really amazing. So I just wanted to share that and thank God for the expansion of his ministry. Amen. Praise thank God. you, Jesus. Now, since you shared that already, um, I need to also say this. You see, a time is coming where we'll see thousands upon thousands of people uh, gathered together and sitting down, lying down, laying down, whatever posture, and meditating together. Literally, a whole stadium. Um, and the next thing you'd know is there'll be home conference in Calgary, home conference in Atlanta, home conference in places. And you'll be seeing the power of God moving in people's lives in ways they've never imagined. The beautiful thing about meditation is, you see, there are prayer conferences, there are worship conferences, and we run some of those ourselves. But the beautiful thing with meditation is, uh, it's mainly, and please believe me when I say this, it's mainly in a meditation environment that way more people get to experience God and know the ways of God. For example, I'll be hard pressed to believe that there'll be, out of all the hundreds of people here, that there'll be five or ten people that did not experience anything at all. It's practically impossible. So, so get set for a mighty move of God. Uh, you're going to be hearing again about the next home conference and uh, how you personally will bring 20, 30, 50 people. And it will be obviously not in this place. Um, I'm trusting God that will be able to host over 1,000 people and way beyond that, in person and online, way more multitudes online. And we'll all have powerful testimonies in Jesus' name, amen. So we'll take a few testimonies online, and then we'll uh, move on. All right. Thank you so much for sending your testimonies online. So one person says, thank you, Jesus, for an amazing session for a healing where a stiffness in the neck was present, and it's gone now. Glory to Jesus. Another person says, wow, what a life-changing experience. My understanding has been expanded. My impact is global, and I have everything I need to succeed. Thank you, Apostle. Mm -hmm. um, another one says, um, when Apostle said, coming out of darkness to light and removing from negative people and environments, the person started crying and felt heaviness removed from inside her and from around her. Praise Jesus. Thank you so much for sending in your testimonies. Please, let's give another round of applause for Dr. Emmanuel Adebusi. All right, so just a little reminder. So instead of a traditional book signing, we'll be doing an intimate conversation right after Pastor David comes up. And we'll be going into the details of the book, um, and you'll be offered an inclusive insider scoop on the behind the scenes of the writing process. Right. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. I will now welcome Pastor David. Is it morning still? Yes. A pleasant good morning to everybody. And uh, Dr. Adewusi, thank you so much, sir. How about we give a big hand for Jesus, though? God is so, so faithful, and uh, we are so grateful that you are all here. And um, we just want to quickly just touch on next steps and what's coming up next in this realm of hour of meditation. So this is now the 6th, so next week, Saturday, would be the 13th of April. So for those of us that are not uh, part of our church 
family yet. Uh, those of us online and those of us in person uh, know that our hour of meditation usually happens at our location that is on 9249 50th Street here in Edmonton, and that is Cornerstone Christian Church of God. So we welcome you to come out, out and uh, join us there. And that's every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. And typically we get you to register for that by uh, going on to... Uh, doctor's page. Uh, I keep wanting to say Apostle, sir, uh, but uh, we'll say Dr. Apostle's page. So it's either e.adewusi on IG or Instagram, if you're <clears throat> older and don't necessarily know what that IG word is. And then you can also now join at Hour of Meditation, which is now the other IG page that we have. So we welcome you to uh, check that out. Uh, beyond that, as you heard Christine share already, is uh, our testimonies. So please, um, afterwards, so once the live is ended, if you please go, and if you have a notable testimony, striking testimonies that has happened to you, please go on to the uh, one of the pages there and, and drop the testimony there because you will not only be a blessing to others in your community, you will also be blessing uh, God's servant, uh, Dr. Adawusi, that he is using in this area. <coughs> Excuse me. Beyond that, like I said, we are Cornerstone Christian Church of God. It's a long name, so you can just go C, 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 G. But you are here and, um, <coughs> excuse me, we want to see you there, those of us online uh, and those of us, again, that are here in person. If you do not have a home church yet, uh, you are at home, and so I will say also welcome home. So tomorrow is Sunday. Uh, it is early in the morning, so you have an opportunity to go home and rest first and then come back. We have three services, so even if you say, ah, uh, Pastor David, I got home a little bit later, and so 9.30 a.m. in the morning is too early, then we also have a 11.30 a.m. service, and if that one is still, I don't know who you are, uh, <laughs> hopefully no one here, maybe those online hiding, um, our 1.30 p.m. service, and we are focusing on love this month. If you've not felt love yet, uh, you must not be here, obviously, because the love here is incredible. The shaking was shaking and shaking, and then as soon as the mic was handed over, it was like, okay, love has come into my hand, and now we are there. So we're talking about love this month, talking about confidence. So please, again, if you are here and you don't have a home church, you're online, you're hiding, don't hide tomorrow. Please come in person. Please come and join us for services. We would love to have you. Uh, we are a ministry that is focused on restoration, transformation by teaching, preaching, and demonstrating the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we will want to love on you, see you restored, see you transform in ways that only Jesus Christ can do for sure. Amen? Amen. So, show of hands quickly. We'll call you out. Uh -huh. uh, I will see you tomorrow, yes? Hands up. Ah, hands up. And I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Uh, I didn't see some hands. So that's okay. You said, I will not lie in God's presence. That's okay. God bless you all the same. Hopefully you have a home church, and that's why you didn't raise your hands. Um, and then we do what we do by the grace of Jesus Christ, but this place wasn't free. Um, the lights and everything that we see here, the people are free. We serve because we love Jesus. Um, but if you were led in any way, shape, or form uh, to give, and that is done uh, through our I would say our e-transfer option. And so you can use the info at cccghq.org. But I would say, please, if you are donating based on Hour of Meditation and you want to give towards Hour of Meditation, please make sure that's specifically stated in the message that it's for Hour of Meditation. Um, and that's where that will go. One last thing I didn't mention, the website for the testimonies, please. I did mention the IG, but if you want to share your testimonies on the website, that would be hello, the word hello, H-E-L-L-O, -L -L -O, at hour of meditation, full word, hour, the word off, and then meditation.com. You can share your testimonies there. I will go ahead and close this out in prayer before we move on to the next session. Father, we give you praise and thanks, honor and glory. Father, thank you because we heard people restored. We hope people transform. Father, we've heard so many encounters. Lord God, those ones that are already 
in the conscious mind and those that are still floating in the conscious that are still in the spirit and will be pulled up into the mind and be able to manifest into lies to understanding and manifestation into your glory father we give you praise father thank you for using your servant dr apostle emmanuel adewusi in the way you have today and lord god from the call lord god into ministry and now into hour of meditation thank you for the hundreds here, the thousands online, and the multi-millions, oh Father God, that will continue to be touched through this. But it's not this platform, oh Father God, but it's you, Jesus. So we give you praise for every person that is here, Lord God Almighty, that has already received your own touch. Father, may they know it, Lord God, before they leave this place in Jesus' name. Lord God, may you touch the people, oh Father God, continually, oh God Almighty, like never before so far. May this be only the beginning, Lord God, of the next stage of ministry, the next stage of their walk and journey with you. Father, we give you praise. Father, thank you for taking the rest of this conference, Lord God, into your own hands and doing what only you can do. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Okay, um, so hello everyone, my name is Tolu, and it's my great privilege to be hosting an intimate conversation with Apostle E. Dr.